Hey folks, Captain Mike here from Salty Cape. Today we're east of Chatham at a spot called Crab Ledge. The original game plan was to cast to tuna keyed in on sand eels. We spent some good feeds. Yes, the tuna are still here, but no, the feeds aren't as epic as they have been. So we're switching to plan B. We're a light tackle trolling, hopefully for bluefin tuna. And uh, let's kick this season off with some nice fish. So I just want to take a minute to talk about our setups up close. So obviously we're fishing with directional bird bars. And uh, as you can see, I have the reddish pink and the green bird bars. The reddish pink is to delineate the port side and the green is to delineate the starboard side. Because obviously, as you can see by these fins on their underbelly of these birds, they're gonna track their outboard direction. So these are gonna take these bird bars way out of our wash and spread out are spread, hence the name spread. Now in the inside lanes, I'm gonna have two classic bird bars. And uh, so what that's gonna do is we're gonna have two spreader bars, one on each side, outside the wash, and then these inside the wash. We're gonna stagger uh, the lengths of where we position these in the spread. So depending on which entry point a fish comes into the wash, as tuna tend to be attracted to the boats, it maybe simulates a a whale and a feed of some sort. We'll have something for everybody depending on where they come in the spread. So I have the reddish pink port directional bar ready to get put out on the port side. And that's effectively my outside rigger. And in my inside lane, I have the classic bird bar. And that's gonna be just in, this, in the wash. This directional bar is gonna be just outside the wash. So with two bars, I get both spectrums on the port side, and then I'll replicate it again on the starboard side. So you can see that fin or wing or whatever you want to call it under the bird, how it's just pushing against the water, pushing the, the spreader bar outboard away from the boat. And so the more line you let out, the further wide these bars are going to go. So now I'm going to send the classic bird bar down the inside. So I have one bird in the wash, one bird outside the wash. Now, so far we have two fish. They both came in on the olive color, which is not a surprise to me because they're keyed in on sand eels. And, uh, but one on the inside and one on the outside. Sometimes they're attracted to the wash, they'll swim in the wash, and then if they veer out, they'll find the bird on the outside of the wash. So this is a perfect spread of just inside and outside the wash. And so now we're gonna do the starboard side. I'm gonna put this one a little closer to the wash. Again, most of these are quite close to the boat. The name of the game today is to remain maneuverable and really have a tactical trolling pattern. So to recap, we've got the starboard bird bar way out. This one's back a little further. The port bird bar back out. Inside classic rigger on the port side, inside classic rigger on the starboard side. The lines are staggered a little bit, so we have sort of a depth in all the different places in the wash. And uh, so, depending on the fish that are attracted to the boat, there's something for everybody in the spread. So I go back and forth on my placement with my directional bars, my outboard bars, the bars that swim away and outside the wash. The most logical spots, obviously, in the rod holder, but I also sometimes put them in the leaning post, and it gets the rod up a little higher, so if you put a little more line out, it's gonna swing even further out. Now, the other reason why I like it up high in the leaning post is if I am gonna fish with a flat line clip, freeze up a rod holder aft. Yeah. So the beauty of these floating bird bars is when you're on a short crew like we are today, you just let that bird float out there. It's just doing its thing. So I'm on the port side. And so the port bird bar is just floating out there while I fight this fish. Be amazed at how many times a fish will hit a bird bar that's just floating in the water 
Um, these are smaller school size bluefin tuna on the hoagie hybrid rod. So, you know, it's just nice, easy fishing. Didn't even get all our lines out, just had the port side and one starboard. Off to a great start. And the reason why I want this fish upwind is so when we go to land it, we don't drift over the fish. And uh, as you can see, the fish is getting further to the bow. I'm just gonna pop the boat in gear, just the port engine. And that's gonna spin the bow out this way and put us back in that quarter position off the stern. If you ever introduce a kid to tuna fishing, this is the kind of tuna that I would recommend. I have about a 30 foot top shot of about 65 pound test mono on this outfit that I use for anything from tubing with stripers all the way up to school bluefin tuna like we're doing here. That mono filament gives the rod a little bit of a shock abrasion because mono tends to stretch. And with that stretch, so if you can imagine with the, the braid with zero flex when the boat hits, when the fish hits, I should say. Um, it just gives it a little extra cushion so it doesn't put too much pressure on the, on the outfit. You can see I'm coming into that top shot of line. And that tells me that, well, I was once close to the boat. That often happens when they see the boat. I'm just gonna get it back to that quarter position. Turn down on the fish. I'm gonna keep that fish upwind. This fish is suddenly feeling a little bigger now. So I just put my port engine in gear. I wanna keep that fish right in this back corner. Turn the wheel a little bit. I don't wanna let that fish get under the boat. So I'm just turning around the fish. You can see this nice, soft, happy action of this outfit. Very forgiving in rough seas. What you don't wanna do is give these fish any slack. Let me get a glove. Well, the gloving's good here. Trying to turn down on that fish. I do not want this fish underneath me. This fish is doing what's called the death spiral, where they swim in a rotation around the boat. And Jack's going to go get me the gaff, so I have that handy. Just want to hook it there so I can reach to grab it. We have a first time tuna crew on the boat, so I'm going to try to show how to land and gaff this all myself here, getting color. Decent fish, it's coming around on its spiral. It's coming back around the death spiral. This is where you know it's getting tired. When it's back, that's when I put the pressure, using a little extra thumb pressure on the spool to turn the fish. That's what tires them out. Now short pumps often, when they come back towards you there, you wanna gain line when they get to about 10 o'clock. Right there, you want to stop them. That's where you want to stop them to get the spot. Now is when you try to get line on that fish. There we go. Got him. There you go. Got him right in the head. On the death spiral, we worked it, and here he goes. Beautiful fish. Perfect keeping and eating size. Came in on the... Uh, the olive colored bird bar. You can see. Now what we like to do with these fish is we bleed them. Here I got the, so what I'm gonna do is I put an incision right here. See that right there. Then I cut this little spot on his chin. And get, yeah. If I had a saltwater wash down pump on the boat, I would pump water into these wounds, but there we go. So the name of the game today is really working the life hard and staying with it, staying with the bubble feed, staying with the life. What I'm gonna do as we approach this bubble feed up here off the starboard side, I'm gonna turn down over it and look at my unit and I'm gonna just work the life. Oh. 
Oh, fish on, yeah. So we saw fish on the side scan there, and we thought we saw one roll. And so what I like to do with these bird bars is I'll tease them. I would crank it in, let it back out, crank it in, let it back out. And then if fish are following your bar at that point, that surge and drop, surge and drop, surge and drop can really create that FOMO sensation where the fish are just, uh, you know, feel like they're gonna miss it and then they'll go and grab it. And uh, so it's a great technique. And that's one thing you can't really do as easily with the outriggers because you'll pop the outrigger. So in these no outrigger bird bars, these directional bird bars, you can do stuff like that. You can drop, you don't have to worry about popping a rigger and uh, just, just work great. It, I, uh, I love that technique. So we've got a limit for our box, so we're gonna call it a wrap. Super impressed with Jack here from Hoagie Lures, his first time tuna fishing. Well, I have to say you're gonna be a little spoiled, but his first two gaff shots, both in the head, we are doing pretty awesome, pretty happy. Nice going, Jack. We're gonna get this guy in the ice and back at it. I just wanna talk about colors for a moment. Now there's two types of colors when it comes to lures. There's attractors, then there's imitators. Attractors are your bright colors, your pinks, your fluorescent greens. Your imitators are, well, just the way they sound. They're specifically imitating, uh, they're specifically imitating something. Today, the fish were really keyed in on sand eels and uh, our intent was originally to cast into feeds, but that didn't happen today. So we pulled out the light tackle trolling outfits and just knowing the waters here on Cape Cod that sand eels are tuna forage, I'd say 75% of the time when I come out here. And uh, so I always load up on all of color spreader bars. This is the lure we intended to use, the hoagie harness jig and olive sand eel color. But um, you know, plan B is with this bird bar and the olive color. And uh, it, like we couldn't keep these bars out for more than a couple of minutes before getting smoked. And uh, they really wanted the sand eel color, we started half attractors, half imitators, and by the end of the morning, it was all olive colored spreader bars, and that was the ticket. And then other days, they don't, they don't, they want the high vis, but when they're keyed in, when there's a lot of bait like there is today, um, the natural colors really did the trick. The outfit we're using is the Hoagie Hybrid Rod. Now, this is a, you know, a, a very easy, light tackle, fun setup to use. I have the LX6 uh, for the reel. This is actually a two-speed reel. I have it spooled with 80-pound test braid and a top shot of 65-pound test mono. The mono's a nice feature because when you're trolling with braid, it sort of serves as a shock absorber. You know, there's a lot of pressure when a fish hits, takes off the other direction. Mono tends to stretch more than even uh, fluorocarbon, certainly more than braid. So, this mono in this setup is gonna give a nice, um, soft shock, shock absorption. And this, this outfit weighs nothing. It's, you know, I can, one hand, it's very lightweight. Um, you know, this season we've used, uh, our first shoot of the season was with this rod for uh, vertical jigging haddock in Cape Cod Bay, a fluke off Nantucket, tube and worm stripers, and today, 55-ish um, inch tuna. And uh, so it's a truly, like a hybrid rod, it does it all. And, um, you know, as Jack just pointed out, um, you know, this rod feels appropriate in each case. Um, it has a soft, very parabolic action. You can just see how soft this outfit is. And it's, uh, you can put a ton of boots to it. Uh, when I was fighting those fish with my gloves on for a little extra drag, I was just really socking down on that spool when the tuna was doing that death spiral. Instead of taking line, on the outside pole of the desk rod. I put the boots to it. I wasn't worried about the rod. It just flex, flex, flex. It's a nice, easy rod. They're short, they're light. And uh, what I especially like about this rod, you know, it's low profile. It's a small, light rod. Also has a small profile reel. So, you know, today uh, was originally designed to be a uh, jig and pop shoot, but these fish really scattered out. And it was really a trolling day. And the nice thing about these outfits is I have a half a dozen of them with me. 
they all fit inside the head in, in my console. They all stayed out of the way. And when it came time to plan B today, uh, which was this awesome tuna shoot, so no complaints, these rods are ready to go. But in the meantime, if we were running and gunning tuna, we wouldn't have had any of these uh, above decks and in our way. There's literally fish on the, on the side skin. I think we just got hit. Whoa. So these lightweight outfits are really forgiving. You can put a lot of boots. The rod's not gonna break. They're light. But this is a bar, a lot of line. And it's really nice we can shift it into low gear. So this little Avid LX6, it's a two speed and that fish just took a lot of bar a lot of line and uh, especially if you got you know kids fighting the fish or maybe someone that's tired shifting it into low gear i'm getting line i got my drag socked up my heavy braid and you can see how easy this is this light rod and uh, you really don't need to get beat up with these outfits this two speed feature you'll never really need inshore unless you've hooked a lobster pot or or something but um it just makes this outfit so much easier to use, this low gear. So as this fish gets closer and sees the boat, sort of part two of the battle begins. And so the closer I get to landing the fish, the shorter my pump strokes are, the more vertical. This fish is still out of ways, but the key is to get constant pressure. Always the goal is to get line, even if it's just a little. So the goal is to land the fish as quickly as possible. The faster the landing, the healthier the release. You can see this fish is getting more and more vertical to us as we get, get closer to the boat. Short rod pumps really put a ton of pressure. It doesn't feel like you're getting much line, but if you're getting a crank, this every, every time you come down, it's a very high gear ratio reel. So you're getting more line than you think. This fish is trying to do its death spiral already. So we're gonna release this fish and I'm gonna put this rod in the holder here as I got a lot of line of the spreader bar. Just gonna leader the fish. So we're gonna release this fish and keep tuna wet too. Just like a striper, I'm just gonna swim him alongside the boat, just like we're doing here. And grab the hook in the corner. There he goes. So the takeaway for today is it's always good to have a plan B. We came out with the spinning gear ready for some top water fish but today they were scattered. So plan B was pulling out a spread of light tackle trolling rods that I kept stowed and hidden in the head of my center console here. And uh, it was awesome. Half dozen 55 inch class, bluefin tuna, bent rods, light tackle, smiles all day. Time to head for the barn and beat this wind, but two thumbs up.